Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sam's Big Blog. I wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to find Sam's Big Blog. I call it Sam's Big Blog because I cover the Big Ten Conference. And if you're familiar with the Big Ten Conference, and if you're watching this and, and because of me, then you are aware of what the Big Ten is. It's spelled B1G. So to get to Sam's Big Blog, it's samsbigblog.us. That's S-A-M-S-B-1-G-B-L-O-G dot U-S. That is the number one, not the letter I. That is Sam's Big Blog. Therefore, you know, Sam's Big Ten blog. blog. It's a vlog. I understand the difference, uh, but the opportunity to type it out will be there as well. Here we are Sunday. It's the day before the national championship game. I made mention last night uh, on the platform formerly known as Twitter that uh, Ian Eagle said something that gave me absolute chills because of what it meant and what it means to me as a Purdue fan growing up. And he says, as Purdue has already won and they're shaking hands, and he says, and the Purdue Boilermakers will play Monday night for the national title. That is, as a Purdue basketball fan, the closest thing to the best thing you could hear ever, which would be the Purdue Boilermakers are national champions. And I know I have said time and time again, and I still contest that it is more important i will take a big 10 championship over a national championship any day of the week and twice on sunday but when it comes to the national championship when you're there and playing for it you're absolutely all about it and want it to happen that's where i am right now uh the sunday before the national championship game is kind of the anticlimactic day of the tournament it's there's only two teams playing it's the only day during the NCAA tournament on the weekend that there are not any games being played when it comes to the national, uh, the men's national or NCAA tournament. It's the only day. It kicks off on a on a on well a Tuesday and Wednesday, but those are the the first four or the round of first four. But then you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, first and second round. Then you have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you get your final four. And then you have Saturday and Monday. Because, obviously, there are so few teams done or playing that you get to the point where, okay, we're, we're dealing with so few teams, there's not going to be constant basketball. So today is a special kind of day to where you sit there and contemplate what can, what will, uh, what you saw in the national or in the national semifinals, what you uh, anticipate happening in the national championship game. We have a national championship game. It's Purdue and UConn, just like a lot of people had. I had it in my bracket right here. I'll even show it for, for proof. Purdue-UConn in the national championship. I picked Purdue as a homer and i've also explained in the last one i'm not really sure it was even though it was it was a homer pick but i don't know that it was a homer pick in the grand scheme of things purdue's got a lot of things going for them they have nothing to lose they've gotten over the hump they will not be eliminated by a, a double digit seed which they even made mention last night and i made mention of it on big talk on friday Purdue's the only team I know that could go to the Final Four and still run the risk of keeping their losing to a double-digit seed team uh, streak intact. If they would have somehow uh, UNC or NC State would have been able to beat them, they would have been the third straight tournament, fourth straight maybe even, that they had been uh, eliminated, actually third straight, they would have been eliminated by a double-digit seed. But Zach Eady put a stop to it. That's five straight games that he's had of 20-plus uh, points, 10-plus rebounds. He's one of five to ever do it. He's going to try Mun tomorrow night to become the first ever to go 20-10 and 10, all six games of the, of the tournament. He's already the first one to do it because, if you remember last year, when they got eliminated by FDU, he had 20 and 10. So therefore he's got six straight games at 20 and 10. 
Nobody's ever done that, but nobody's definitely ever done that in one tournament. And uh, talk about real quick before we kind of uh, wrap up, how did Purdue get to this? Um, I, I talked about this. I talked about, we've talked year in, or all year about how great this Purdue offense is. We've made very little mention about how actually how good their defense is. Okay. NC State played really, a really a strong, good defensive game against Purdue. It was great. They, they had the plan in place. They forced Purdue into, into a bat, not the greatest of shooting nights. They, they did a lot of things right on the defensive side. But what they didn't do is they didn't execute offensively. And I tweeted, formerly known as tweeted that out about the fact that when they could just, North Carolina State could not take advantage of a really good defensive game that they were playing because they were missing shots they were missing open shots but they were missing shots up by the by the hoop and i will contend still to this day and even after that zach Eady is a huge part of the defense or the offensive scheme for other teams because they don't want to drive to the hoop you've got seven four kind of pulling back if you've got an off a center that can pull you pull zach Eady away from the hoop you're going to be able to drive more and it hasn't been able to be successful yet. The NC State was a little successful early on in that with that with pulling Edie away from the hoop, but he, they just couldn't keep him away. The shooting wasn't there; they weren't hitting the shots, so that, that allowed Edie to 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 fall back and play a little bit more defense up by the hoop. That's what Purdue does. If your center can't do that, and Klingon for for. For UConn is going to be able to pull him out a little bit more. I don't know if you see Trey Kaufman Wren take him more man on man because he can go outside a little bit more and a lot more effective than what Zach Eady can because he's slow. He's seven four. He's three hundred pounds. He's not the epitome of speed. He is a slow, uh, a, a slow player comparatively, but when it comes to Purdue establishing things I think I think when it comes to defense they can play high paced or they can play slow paced it really doesn't make a difference if they're playing an 80 point paced game or a 50 point a 60 point based game Purdue can play effectively within those two ranges I think tomorrow night you see a lot of that happening i think you see purdue locking down a little bit more defensively than offensively don't get me wrong they're going to keep trying to feed uh ed down low depending on who's guarding him they're going to have to f they're going to try to establish a shooting game from the outside from the 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 role players braden smith one of nine in the final four game, five turnovers looked very pedestrian and not not too good. I think he was right here a little bit. I think he let it get here a little bit of, I've got to do things right. And he's, he's finding out that if he just calms down, if he just calms down and distributes and plays his game, he is perfect most of the time. He's, he's better than most, most of the time if he just plays his game. So I think there's a lot of things that Purdue uh, can look forward to tomorrow and try to disrupt uh, what UConn does offensively. I think uh, it, it could be a lot more defensive. It might be a mid-60s game instead of a high 70s, mid, mid to high 70s. I think it's going to be a close game. I think, uh, uh, honestly, if either team wins, I don't wouldn't be shocked. Uh, but honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I think you're looking at uh, um, a team of destiny, much like the one that uh, Virginia was when they uh, got beat by a University of Maryland of Baltimore County the year before, but then went roughshod through and beat a Purdue team, a Carson Edwards-led Purdue team, in the Elite Eight uh, in overtime to get to the Final Four and then beat uh, beat a couple of teams, including uh, Texas Tech and Auburn, in the uh, – 
in the final or final four in the in the championship game to win the national championship, I think Purdue wins the national title next or tomorrow. I'm saying that a little bit with hopefulness of a homer, but I honestly, I've analyzed it, looked over it, and I feel comfortable saying that while I am being a homer on it, I really truly believe that the Purdue Boilermakers will be your 2024 NCAA men's national champions, thus ending the 24-year drought that the Big Ten has had uh, looking for its national championship, uh, the first one since Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans did it in the year 2000 back in Indianapolis. So whatever the pro, whatever it is, I am so gloriously happy that Purdue has been able to, to, to exercise a lot of demons and get to a place that I'd never seen them in my life, um, at least knowingly seen them in my life, in the Final Four, winning in the Final Four. Just getting to the Final Four was not enough. I asked Mason Gillis that too uh, uh, last Sunday when they were celebrating on the on the court. I said, you're at the top of the mountain. How does it feel? And he looked at me. First thing he says is we're not on top of the mountain. We have two games yet to be on the top of the mountain. But this is great. But we have two more games. He was holding the regional championship trophy telling me we haven't accomplished anything yet. This is not our goal. So while it was a huge monkey off of Matt Painter's back and Purdue's back of – getting over the losing to a 16 seed last last year. They're looking darn good as a pick for the national champion. So enjoy this t- tomorrow night Purdue fans, Big 10 fans, hope for your for your conference to to succeed. Um within reason, you know, you can hope they don't whatever, but uh be be proud of what what your conference has been able to do on the women's side. Caitlin Clark falling short in the national championship game, but she's taken she took Iowa, a team that wasn't established as anything, and got them to national prominence and became the greatest b- women's basketball player and, and the best scorer in NCAA history. Uh, so the Big Ten's doing great things, and when the Big Ten as a whole, the conference as a whole, does well, it does every conference team uh, a bunch of good too. So. Uh, if you're not a Purdue fan and you don't care if they win or not, that's fine. But don't be upset when they're cutting the nets down because that gives validity to the whole Big Ten Conference. I love you all. I hope and wish you well tomorrow while watching the game. If you're a Purdue fan, boiler up. And if you're not, that's okay. We still love you anyways. And we'll see you next time on Sam's Big Blog.